I seen Bruce Lee's exhibition in 1964 at the International Karate Exhibition in Long Beach, um, hosted by Ed Parker. Um, my first view of Bruce was uh, awesome. Never saw a Kung Fu exhibition before, like, like Bruce Lee's performance. Explosive speed and power, his philosophies, his uh, martial arts way, um, was, was never shown in the Western world before for me. He had one of his students, I think it was Taki Kimura that came up with him, and they were doing a chi zao type sparring. Okay. Uh, he had ex uh, demonstrated his, um, his one inch punch against uh, uh, from an, uh, a volunteer from the audience, and, and he demonstrated his speed by having the black belt try to block his punch, and he struck, okay. and it could not touch him, or go block his uh, um, hand speed. Each individual was different for Bruce, and he was one who stressed perfection first. Bruce Lee was a perfectionist, and he treated everybody as an individual, like the big heavy people. He would uh, work on things that would be to his uh, benefit. Uh, for me, because I had my boxing background, he worked on my hand speed. Um, I lacked the flexibility. He worked on my flexibility, my stretching. I did boxing. I did kajakembo. I did judo uh, as a kid. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't think uh, or would say that he was the first. I know um, the kajakembo founders, um, uh, Chief Imperato, um Adriano Imperato. He was a boxer, and he saw kempo karate, and he saw judo and jujitsu, and they. That's where kajakembo came from. So they had. Uh, they use an eclectic type martial arts to form Kajakembo. Bruce Lee was in a way an individual where he just took things that worked for him. Um, he liked the boxing, he liked the, the, the fencing for the center line uh, control or theory and, and the, 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 the grappling arts, the grappling arts, uh, uh, the hand trapping and kicking from the northern southern of uh, China. Right. See, as a fighter, you know, people ask me uh, at that time um, in the 70s, who was a better fighter, Muhammad Ali or Bruce Lee? At that time, Ali was the top of his game. Now, it was, if it was just boxing, of course, uh, Muhammad Ali would beat Bruce, but it was totality where you could use your hand, and feet, knees, elbows, and everything. Bruce Lee would take Ali. Um, and so he, he was like the first to use all these different martial arts for his own uh, ability, mental and physical ability. A curriculum was based on um, reality uh, martial arts. We wore headgear, chest protectors, shin guards, baseball shin guards, uh, boxing gloves, and we tried to outpoint, uh, hit each other. And, and to know what reality is, because in that time it was, it, was a, it was a point sparring type technique so you won't hurt your own partner but he wanted us to go full bore in, in the punches and the kicks knees and elbows and the grappling arts to strike is to get struck back I met Bruce Lee in 1964 my first impression uh, when I saw him do an exhibition at the um, International Karate Tournament one of the first tournaments in in, the, in California or in the US um, it was an awesome exhibition it was an exhibition that wasn't shown uh, in the Western world. Kung Fu was very, very secretive at that time. And it was Bruce Lee who had break that uh, bar about uh, um, training in Chinese uh, Kung Fu. Bruce Lee, uh, quality as a teacher, um, he was a perfectionist. He had every individual um, uh, different uh, um, lesson plan for each individual. Um, the big heavy set guy, he would he would uh, train that person to do certain things, where else uh, a tall, tin man he would do certain things um, for his own um, advantage. So Bruce Lee, a perfectionist, trained each individual differently. Uh, I was very fortunate uh, to be at the right time in the right place and uh, to train with Bruce Lee at his house. Uh, those were private sessions, one-on-one -on -one with teacher and student. And, and those sessions were geared to the individual and not to the classroom work. So we will work on my weak points and how I can strengthen certain things like my kicking um, ability uh, or the hand trapping. 
and he was a one-on-one, -on -one. and he always ended up in sparring. Bruce Lee liked to spar to everybody just so that he can get his game uh, better. First time um, I trained with Bruce Lee, I met uh, Mito Yurihara. Mito was a black belt in Aikido. He was also the, the publisher and owner of Black Belt Magazine at the time. Okay. And so uh, when I went to train with Bruce Lee, I met Mito, and Mito and I were training. Uh, Mito had no hands or, or kicking ability, so I was working with Mito, and, and Bruce was coaching both of us. Danny Nosanto, uh, Ted Wong was one of the regulars with Bruce Lee, Danny Lee, and um, some of the chosen few of uh, 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 in Bruce Lee's school at the Lee Jung Fan Gong Fu Institute in Chinatown. Bruce Lee uh, took his art to a philosophical level, and, and one being um, the individual is more important than any established style or system. He wanted to free his students from limitations and bondage, um, and for the individual to have their own original creativity, uh, such as uh, shadow boxing or the way of fighting. And, and his philosophy about the individual is more important brought us to another level. Bruce Lee didn't want us to train or be just like him. He wanted us to have our own creative uh, Jeet Kune Do way. As a person, he was, um, he was a very interesting individual to be with. You know, he was always teaching no matter what. Like for instance, when, when I used to drive Bruce uh, to pick up a, 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 a jogging shoe, and in my car I was smoking, uh, and in those days, in the 60s, you know, everybody smoked cigarettes. So, uh, and, and when I was driving, it, a conversation came up about, he says, Richard, you see those brown, yellow horizon um, in, in, the, in the area? I says, yeah, those are f uh, f smog. He says, that smog is what you have in your lungs. You're smoking that smog in your lungs. And, and that was something to be, um, uh, that I thought about a long time. And when I went to work that night, I used to work for the airlines, and I saw on a white fuselage of the aircraft, uh, they used to have the exhaust ports on the side of the aircraft with the same yellow-brown stain. Those were the cigarette stains. Now, you know, Bruce Lee, every time you talk to him, he talked in something about uh, philosophy and, and very educating you about certain things in life, um, making you go above and beyond your own limitations um, and, and bettering your health and things like that. Bruce Lee's uh, perfect his own way because, you know, it's like Van Gogh and Mozart, all those geniuses, you know, Van Gogh loved his painting and uh, Mozart loved his music. Bruce Lee was the same genius who loved his martial arts. 24 hours a day, he trained in martial arts, nothing else. He didn't like nothing else. Uh, yeah, he enjoyed music and things like that, but if he could train 24 hours a day, he trained 24 His leisure, his vacation, his, his work was martial arts. And, and um, that, was, that was Bruce Lee. He, Sorry. And he loved reading. Uh, he read all the philosophical books. Uh, you name anybody, uh, um, Mahatma Gandhi, uh, the Zen sayings, and he picked up from that and then used it for his physical martial arts. You know, in his four walls, he had books from the floor to the ceiling, and I used to go there and just look at those books all the time. I never saw books like that, but he used to collect books, and you know he read the books because every book I used to pick up, he, he had it on the line, and he had um, um, notes about different things. Um, and technique-wise, you know, he, I, I saw one technique that he on the line, no good. Uh, the hand is winding up for a strike. When the hand was is right there, he could have struck from there, you know, and things like that. But philosophical-wise, um, um, pictorial, uh, he always used to make comments about certain things for his own martial arts. At one time, I wanted to gain a lot of weight because he was like only 140 pounds, and and uh, but because of metabolism, his metabolism was too uh, aggressive, too fast, he couldn't gain weight. So he changed his training, his weight uh, uh, lifting to weight training for his own martial arts ability. How do you get the kick faster by training with weights? How do you get the hand to move quicker and faster? And, and that's the way he trained. I heard about that death um, 
the, the morning uh, after in, in 1973, at 2 o'clock in the morning, I got phone calls about from friends that Bruce Lee had died, and I didn't think too much about it. They said they heard it on the news. That morning, uh, that was a Saturday morning, I went to Dan's uh, backyard where we used to train, and he was having a private lesson with uh, Dr. Bob Ward. And, and when they were training, I just sat down to the side and did my own stretching. When, when Dan stopped training, uh, Bob Ward, and he looked at me, and I asked Dan, I says, is it true? I heard Bruce Lee died. And he said, yes. Um, um, they got a phone call from Linda Lee that Bruce Lee did die, uh, passed away the day before. And, um, you know, I hugged Mr. Inosanto and, and offered my condolences, and we walked away with tears in our eyes. And Dan couldn't teach anymore, because they were very, very close. Um, not until several weeks later, when he he was uh, over his uh, um, uh, about the death of Bruce Lee, then he said, "Let's open up a school together, so that we can we can share our Bruce Lee experience and 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 uh, promote start promoting the Filipino martial arts, which wasn't taught in the U.S. Uh, because of Bruce Lee, I went above and beyond my potential as a martial artist." Bruce Lee once told me an individual should be well rounded in all the martial arts range, not just the punch and kick. You got to look at the grappling arch, the throwing arch, uh, uh, the joint locks. You got to look at the weapon arts, and and his his uh, concept about a real martial artist at that time in in the 60s, he said a uh, one martial arts against another martial arts, no matter what style of system they come from, they compete by sparring against each other. One can have a weapons, one don't have a weapons. Let me see how good you are with the weapons against, uh, with no weapons. That was the ultimate challenge then, just like we have today. The, the, the different pride, the no holds bar. But Bruce Lee says, if a guy is good with a staff or, or, or the knives or, um, or against an empty hand, um, that is the ultimate now. And he thought about that in 1970, I mean 60s. My future plan, IMB, International Martial Arts and Boxing. International Martial Arts mean all type of martial arts that you can spar with to test your skill. Uh, boxing comes from Savat, from Chinese uh, kickboxing, you know, Muay Thai boxing, Western boxing, uh, so that you can spar and test your skills. If you cannot spar on the ground, standing with weapons, and, and um, if you can't spar with that, how would you know whether you got what it takes to be a martial arts? And the ultimate in our sparring now is uh, we do what they call an IMB a thon, sparring one round with weapons, sparring one round with the hands, sparring one round with boxing, knees and elbows, sparring one round with grappling. And the ultimate is weapons against empty hand or empty hand against weapons. Now when you got that, then you got a good martial artist. Thank you very much. Thank You're welcome. You it's you. my pleasure.